My name is Asia Samson, and today on Baptism Overland, we are installing and reviewing the Vector Off-Road Jeep JK E-Dock. You guys, I am so excited because I finally went and bought this thing. This has been on my short list of mods for a really, really long time. Have you ever looked up a product online and you just weren't ready to buy it yet, but yet you don't close out the window, you just kind of keep it up there knowing that you'll probably come back and make your purchase later. So you just open up a whole bunch of other tabs for other websites. Well, their website has been a tab on my phone for a really, really long time. And I just kept telling myself, one of these days, I'm gonna go back on, finally finish my purchase. But every time I went and did that, I ended up changing my mind and going a different direction and buying something else. But on this last trip to Talladega, Alabama, things were happening on the trail that made me realize, yeah, you need that dock. So as soon as I got home, first thing I did was open up the tab that's been on my phone for years and finally made the purchase and here it is. See, the thing is, the way I'm holding the phone in the Jeep right now is with the 67 Designs base mount. It's just a mount that screws into the inside of the cubby hole on the top of the dash. And from there, there's a ball and then from that ball, there's an arm and on the other end of the arm is a 67 Designs device holder. And I love 67 Designs. Nothing has held my phone better than their mounts and I've tried a ton of them. I love the way the 67 designs, it kind of just clicks into place, clicks right back out. It's really, really sturdy. You don't have to deal with all these different arms like the Ram mounts and my wife's Forerunner. And I want to stick with 67 designs. The holder itself is not the problem. The problem is the mounting. With just one screw inside the dash, it's starting to get loose and it has a lot of play now. Now on a daily driving scenario, you don't even notice it. It's still secure. But once we started hitting the trails, then you can see the arm kind of just bounce and move around a little bit. And that's not good when I'm using that mount for my phone to video the scenery in front of me. Like I have my phone set up on landscape pointing outwards and every time we hit a bump, that arm would shake and it was just messing up my footage. Speaking of which, like if I wanted to add a GoPro or if I wanted to mount an iPad or if I wanted a device holder for the passenger side for my passengers, there's no way I can do that because the base mount that they have only has one, at least the one I have, or you can buy one that has three of them. But then that is just not really sturdy. So enter the Vector Off-Road JKE Dock. If you own a Jeep, I can almost guarantee you already know what this is. And if you don't, you need to know because this is one of the best upgrades you can do to your Jeep, especially if you're trying to mount a whole bunch of stuff. This form fits around your windshield, form fits around that little cubby, and from there, you just take some clamps and you can mount your phones, you can mount your iPads, you can mount GoPros, you can mount stuff for your walkie-talkie, whatever. There's a whole bunch of accessories just for this dock alone. So I don't know why it took me so long to buy it, but I'm glad I now have it. So let me show you what comes with this kit. We'll get this thing installed and then I'll give you my review. I will first off obviously you get the dock. It is made of one inch steel tubing and even if it's steel it's super light not heavy at all. It's covered with a textured black powder coat which I love because it matches the exact texture of my rock rails so it kind of gives it that whole look where what's on the outside sort of matches what's on the inside. I also like that they have these little kind of details like right here you see vector it's a little plate you didn't have to do that. Companies don't have to do these little details like that, but it's nice to see that they put stuff like that just to kind of make it stand out a little bit more, make it feel a little bit more premium. All right, up next you have two plastic plugs. These are the plugs that go at the end of the tubes just to give you a much more finished look so it's not just open like that. The next you have the two risers. These are the risers that go one on the passenger side, one on the driver's side on top of your dash. I'll show you where you find those holes. You basically just screw these in and then these screw into the dock itself and that's basically it that's the whole install except for screwing this part to the bottom of the cubby where there's a screw there now that's where my old mount is actually right now and now that will be replaced by this thing now working in conjunction with the dock is a 67 designs device holder now this does not come with the dock you have to buy this separately but when you do order the dock 
you have the option of adding certain device holders to your order. Like you can add one device holder, you can add an iPad holder, you can add a GoPro mount, whatever it is, you can add it and I'll just put it with your order. This unit by itself is $105. And I know that's pretty steep for just something that holds your phone, but it is so worth it. Like I said, nothing has held my phone better than 67 designs, super secure, easy to remove the phone on and off. It, it's just the best. And real simple mechanics on one end of it is your clamp that goes around the dock. And then from there, it tightens to a carbon fiber arm. And then from that arm, it goes to that 67 Designs device holder that I was talking about. I mean, look how smooth that action is. There's no resistance and yet it's super tight, super grippy. Now I do have one of these already in the Jeep. The only problem is I don't have this at the end of it. It just goes to a ball clamp that came with the base mount that I bought. So what I would suggest to you is when you go and buy the dock, if you know you're gonna be adding some stuff to it, then go and just make a purchase of these uh, ball mounts. Just buy a couple if you want, that way you're ready to mount stuff on it. It's a 20 millimeter ball. You can also get longer arms. They have longer arms than this. This is a shorter one, but if you want something that will reach out further or whatever, then they do have different lengths. They have a short, they have a middle, and they have a long one. So that's pretty much it. You can build this kit out any way you want. That's why I'm super excited to finally have it because now I can finally finish the cockpit area of my Jeep and have everything that I need to have mounted finally be ready to go. To install the vector bar, the first thing you'll want to do is locate the two plastic covers on the dash. One is on the driver's side and the other is on the passenger side. I found the easiest way to spot them is from the outside looking in through the windshield. Use a screwdriver to pop them out and inside there will already be two factory bolts sticking out. There are nuts on those bolts but leave them in place. Take the two risers that came with the kit and screw them onto the bolts and tighten them as much as you can by hand. There's no need to make them any tighter than that. Repeat on the passenger side. For the middle mounting point, remove the rubber liner from the cubby. I don't have mine anymore because I removed it a long time ago to install the 67 Designs phone mount. Locate the screw underneath that rubber liner in the cubby and remove it with a 7mm socket. Don't lose that screw because you'll be using it again. Place the vector bar on the dash and bolt it to both risers. Do not tighten yet. Take the screw you removed earlier and use it to mount the middle area of the vector bar to the same hole inside the cubby. You can now tighten the other bolts with a 4mm hex key and installation of the dock is now complete. For the phone mount, start by attaching the ball clamp wherever you want on the dock. Position the ball where you'd like and then loosely tighten it so it doesn't move. Then attach the arm to the ball, place the arm in position and then loosely tighten as well. From there, just adjust the arm and phone mount to where you'd like it and then fully tighten in place. All right, here is the vector bar fully installed. Probably one of the easiest installs I've ever done on the Jeep. So simple. Got the phone mount right where I want it. Great line of sight and that one-handed operation. Look at that. So easy and man, that's not going anywhere. That thing is rigid. Loving it. Okay, why have I not done this mod earlier? And you know what? I take full responsibility. A lot of you, my friends. Vector dock, get the vector dock. You're gonna want that vector dock. And I just kept saying, I got it. Don't worry, I'll get to it eventually. Kept pushing it off. And now that it's on the Jeep, I'm looking at it like, yeah, this should have been on this thing from the very beginning because this thing is awesome. I can finally mount a whole bunch of stuff to the dash. I can put another phone holder for the passenger side. I can now get my iPad up so I can get Gaia going. I can now get a GoPro mount so I can film the open road. So many, so many possibilities. And now I'm seeing why a lot of people who own Jeeps like to install this thing in their rigs because it just makes mounting things so convenient. And here I am, I'm supposed to give an honest review and yet is it considered a review if there's nothing bad I can say about it? Like for example, installation. This was probably the easiest thing I have ever installed on the Jeep. Like 
ever. It's so simple. All you got to do is pop out the factory tabs that are on the dash. And then once you take those tabs out inside, there's a bolt from the factory. All you got to do is take the risers that come with this kit, screw it into those bolts, and then take the vector dock, screw it to those risers, and then screw in the bottom of the vector dock into that little cubby area, and you're done. Like that's it. And you're ready to start mounting stuff on it. Number two, the way it looks, super clean, super sleek. It's not obstructive. It looks like it should have been in there from the factory from the very beginning. Like that's just how clean it looks. As far as finish, quality is like top notch. The welds are so clean. And then the textured black powder coat on top of it is just so nice. Now, if we're talking utility, I mean, God, you can mount anything anywhere along this dock. So wherever you want to put something, the bar is there, you can put it. See, the issue that I've seen with other vehicles who can't have vector docks, you're pretty much limited to where you can mount things onto. Like for example, a lot of times it's usually in the middle console area, there are systems for that, or maybe along the A pillar on the driver's side, or maybe suction cups. It, there's not a lot of options for you to mount a bunch of stuff. Now, I'm not saying that I'm gonna load this thing with just a bunch of gear. I don't plan to do that. I'm just gonna look like an idiot. But I do want to get an iPad on there. I want to get a GoPro and I do want another phone holder for the passenger side. And that's pretty much it. But at least now I know if let's say I'm shooting GoPro videos, I can put that GoPro anywhere along that bar and get different angles versus just having it straight in the middle. All right, but you want a gripe. Okay, I'll give you somewhat of a gripe and that is price point. It is a little bit pricey to set up a system like this. For the dock itself, I believe I paid about $169, which honestly, it's not even that bad. Considering the quality of this thing and the convenience of being able to mount anything anywhere along the rails, I would gladly pay that $169 over and over again for a product like this. The issue is not the dock, it's all the stuff that you are gonna get to put on the dock for mounting. It can get a little bit higher, and a lot of that's not even from Vector Off-Road necessarily, it's more so from 67 Designs. 67 Designs is not cheap, I mean you're paying $100 for a phone holder, but you are getting top quality, and like I said before, nothing has held my phone better than 67 Designs. All their stuff has been great, and now that I have it on the e-dock, it's gonna make it even better because now I can get the GoPro mounts and the iPad mounts and more phone mounts. I would gladly pay that too because 67 Designs, their phone holders are like aluminum. They're strong. They grip the phone really, really well. It's worth it to me. So really, for me, it's not a gripe, but if you are gonna set up a system like this, you're looking at $169 for the dock, then you're paying about $105 for each phone holder because it comes with the tube clamp and it comes with the arm and it comes with the holder itself. So if you want two of those, that's about $210. And then if you want the iPad mount, that's about $149. And I believe that comes from Joby. And then the GoPro mount, I believe is about 55, if I'm not mistaken. So if you add all of that up, having a full blown, I don't know, cockpit setup with the Vector eDock would probably run you above $500. Now, is that worth it to you? I'm not sure. The good thing is you're not having to pay that all at once. You're just getting this dock as a system to get it set up. And then from there, you can build on it as you see fit. And that's what I plan to do. I'm not just gonna just start throwing money and just get a whole bunch of mounts. I'm gonna see what I need little by little and build up from there. But yeah, that's all I got. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it helped you make a decision on whether or not to get it. And if you did, please let me know in the comments and let me know how you're liking it. If you did find this helpful, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and also consider supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to make content like this. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time.